So hi, hey everybody, thank you for coming out. Welcome to the intro to Pathfinder. Ja, 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 ja. This is the wormhole mapping software, or one of the several wormhole mapping softwares for EVE Online, not the popular Pazio tabletop role-playing game. The general overview of what we're going to be looking at, uh, this, this should take roughly an hour. I've never done it, so we're kind of playing it by ear there. But basically, we're just going to be going over the basics of how to use Pathfinder. Um, nothing too, too intensive, because it can be, can be complicated, but it can also be really simple. So I'm going to start off with uh, three things. First off, hi, my name is Yuki Illyrian. You've probably seen me in game. That's thing number one. Thing number two, this, as much as it is going to be um, a quick class on Pathfinder, this is not going to be at all a class on scanning. Uh, while there is some scanning that is involved with using uh, Pathfinder and getting the data to put into uh, Pathfinder, we're going to be bypassing that for the section of this class where I'm going to be doing a, a mini practical because I have uh, my old Makoto. She's sitting in a wormhole right now, and I've already pre-scanned the wormhole. So we don't have to waste time doing that. For anybody that is happens to be new, I am going with the basic assumption that you know how to use an exploration ship. If you don't, there are many people here that can teach you that after this course. Uh, you know how to use a probe scanner and probes. You can uh, scan down cosmic signatures. And roughly speaking, you know how to traverse through wormhole space. If there's anything more specific, I'm sure both either myself or anybody here uh, that is more knowledgeable than me can uh, give you pointers on that if you are curious. But generally speaking, a wormhole mapping software allows you to keep track of where you've been, where you're going, and what's around you uh, as you progress through wormhole space. Because it is ever-changing, it is uh, larger than you would expect, there is like, I don't remember the exact number, but like over like... 2,000 some odd wormholes? 2,604. So the goal of this course is to teach you Pathfinder. It is not uh, It is not me saying that Pathfinder is better than Tripwire or Siggy or any other mapping software. Personal opinion is that they are both good for various different reasons. I find Tripwire a lot better for uh, scanning things down really, really quickly. Uh, but Pathfinder I prefer because it looks pretty. And it shows you a lot more information, but it is only as good as the information you put into it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to, well, you're going to get to a web page that kind of looks like this. So you get there by going to Pathfinder TACW.space. If you happen to leave Signal Cartel in future, there are several other corporations within EVE Online that have their own privately hosted versions of Pathfinder. The Uni has one, and I know Brave has one as well, as big corporations that have it. Uh, we're going to be using the public version of Pathfinder for today because even though Signal Cartel does have our own privately hosted version of Pathfinder, as someone who has used it or attempted to use it for three weeks, I would not recommend it. Uh, the public version is what we're going to be using. So when you get here, uh, if you're following along, uh, if you've already logged in before, your character will be here, and it'll show you, uh, like, what corporation you're in. Or you can just hit the uh, login. And when you log in, you're going to see something that looks like this, actually. This horrible, horrible mess. This is the Signal Cartel Corp map. Now, this is why I'd imagine that a lot of people who attempt to use Pathfinder get turned off really, really easy. Uh, because they see this and they run, screaming, as you should, because this is a mess. So what this is, um, is anybody that has ever logged in as a member of Signal Cartel, this is the default map that they get dumped to, and where they are, their actual location will be automatically placed somewhere on this map. So as you can see, I'm right here, because this is where I am. Uh, don't use this map, ever, before anything. It will be impossible to keep it organized because too many people are logging on and trying things. We don't officially use it for any reason. So just don't, don't use that. Don't use that at all. Instead, you're going to be making a private map, which I'll explain in a moment. But when you're using Pathfinder, it'll probably look something a bit more like this. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can organize uh, your pathways and how everything works. But roughly speaking, this is kind of how uh, I, I organize my stuff at the moment. 
you have a starting point, which can be whatever you want, uh, and you can connect it to the various wormholes. So how Pathfinder visualizes uh, wormholes is with all of these different boxes. Each of these boxes uh, showcases a particular system, either a wormhole system or a normal space system or even abyssal systems, because, you know, why not? All the data that it can show uh, is it shows you what class it is, uh, C's 1 through 6 and uh, the other special ones. It'll show you the connections, where um, there are static wormholes and where they potentially lead to. The color coding is uh, personalized. You can actually change that to be whatever the heck you want. Um, and I just happen to have a little format there, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, and it also has uh, connections that can uh, go between the different wormholes, which can showcase different information. So in this particular case, uh, we have some connections here with an L on it. Anybody happen to guess what that means? It is a large wormhole, and ships of large size or smaller can fit through it. Uh, there are also medium holes and small holes, which are frigate holes, and a bunch of other things. Uh, the map can also show you, uh, as indicated by this red line, uh, the mass of a hole. So any wormhole in EVE Online has a certain amount of mass that you can fit through it before it collapses. Pathfinder will keep track of that to an extent. Uh, if you find a brand new wormhole and it's been there for a number of hours, obviously it's not going to be able to tell you how much mass is exactly left. It'll just give you a general range and you can keep track of things. But if you happen to check on a wormhole and it is uh, unstable mass-wise, you can just, you know tell Pathfinder to set it up to whatever stage of mass you want, and it'll be nice and colorful there so you can see it. Uh, you can also say, if you happen to be sharing a map with uh, other people, you can tell all your fellow courtmates to save mass. So please do not throw gigantic battleships with their micro-warp drive through these wormholes. Please, we'd like these connections to still be up. Uh, do you set it yourself, or is it automatic? Everything that goes into Pathfinder, like everything that goes into almost every wormhole software, uh, it is 90% what you yourself put into it. Most wormhole mapping software will follow you through space because you give them access to that. But the most that it'll do automatically it is it'll say that you were in this system, and then you went to this other system, and then it'll actually uh, just pop it up and give you a little connection between them. But it won't give you the information specifically because it doesn't know. You have to tell it. Which is one of the, the more downsides of using wormhole mapping software is that you have to constantly feed it all of the information as you go. This is true uh, not just with Pathfinder, but also with Tripwire and a bunch of other things. Can you copy paste info text from wormhole description? You can, uh, but there is nowhere really to input it into Pathfinder. I wish that would be great if you could, but um, while there are things that you can copy-paste from the game into Pathfinder, and we'll get to that shortly, uh, data on it as far as like mass and things like that, that's not something that can be done, unfortunately. Uh, the other two things that we're going to look at really quickly here, and then we'll start looking at the UI and a bunch of other different things, uh, is these purple lines. Uh, wormholes have a set amount of time that they exist for. Eventually, you will get a wormhole that is EOL, end of life. And Pathfinder shows that by the purple lines that are shown on either end of a wormhole connection. That means that the wormhole is only going to be there for somewhere between a minute and four hours, depending on uh, the wormhole class and when it went end of life. And lastly, uh, one thing that I really like about uh, Pathfinder here is that it can show you where bubbles are. So if you look over here at Rancer, because of course it's Rancer, there is this little bubble icon on the bottom end of the, the, the Rancer connection. That means that if you decide to take this wormhole connection from this C3 to Losec Rancer, there's going to be a bubble on the other side. Be prepared for that. Um, but this is not the only way that you can actually set up uh, the visuals of, of, of your layout. This is just how I do it. It is me attempting to simulate Tripwire somewhat. 
So it's like you start here and then one connection is down that way and then this way and so on and so forth down the ways. But you can find other ways. Captain, I have turned on the no smoking and seatbelt sign. Please remain in your seat until I have determined that it is once again safe to move about the cabin. Thank you, Allison. Yes, this is being recorded. Maybe I maybe I should go and tell Allison for the moment. That's fine with me. We're gonna turn. Okay, uh, this is another way that you can do it. Uh, this is a way that I actually had uh, my Pathfinder set up when I was basing myself out of the Sizo campus, or not really campus, but the Sizo station. You would just set up a bunch of uh, connections that are nearby. Are the bubbles manual input? Like somebody adds, is there a bubble there? Yes, bubbles are manually input. Pathfinder does not know where bubbles are. You have to manually tell it. Good information is key. Intel, Intel, Intel. It'll save your life one day. But this is another way that you can do it. You can just start in a high sec, keep moving down the rows until you find a wormhole, and then you can just go and make your own chain as you go. Or you can be really crazy and do a weird spidery looking thing. So you can start here in the middle in Thera, and then you can just spread out to wherever you want to go. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways and it is uh, pretty customizable in that way so that's the main window now all of the other sections of Pathfinder are customizable in that you can move them wherever the heck you want you can just click and drag there are a couple of things you can't move uh, so the main window you can't move it and you can make it larger but you can't make it wider, which is one thing that I really, really hate about it, because I really wish I could make it take up all three rows here. But directly below, in this example, uh, is the signature module. Uh, now, if you've ever used a wormhole mapping software before, you should roughly know what this is. This is where you will take all of your stuff, all of the, everything that you have scanned from your in-game probe window, and you're going to paste it here. So this will tell you uh, signature names, what kind it is, uh, the type, any description that you want to put in, and where it leads. It'll also tell you how old it is. There are a couple of different ways of inputting signatures. The easiest one is to just copy-paste, because we're lazy, and it'll accept that no problem. You can manually input any signature you want by hitting the little uh, arrow button, and you can do them one at a time by inputting the signature IDs. Really, it only cares about the first three uh, digits. You can really put in whatever the heck you want. You can uh, put in whatever type you want. And if you happen to be putting in a wormhole, it'll be like, yeah, hey, here are the statics. Is it one of those? If not, you can just be like K162 and be like, hey, it goes there and it leads to somewhere. It doesn't actually lead to that, but that's a way to do it. Another way of inputting signatures is using the signature reader, which is more beneficial if you are attempting to put in signatures for a wormhole that uh, you already have information for. This is very good for updating signatures rather than inputting them from a fresh hole. Because you can paste your probe scanner window here, you can hit laser delete if you want it, and then it'll show you what everything is about to change into. Uh, so you don't accidentally delete signatures that are actually there. Very helpful. Uh, then we're going to have a look at this info panel. This info panel gives you some generalized information uh, about the wormhole you currently have selected, which is probably where you are. It gives you its actual name, its type, the security status, how many planets are here, which you can hover over and actually see the planets. Helpful if you're looking for PI stuff, just not in a shattered wormhole like I'm currently looking at. And it gives you information on the statics, including uh, mass limitations, if that is something that matters to you. You can also use this section right here to put in whatever uh, information or notes that you want, whether uh, just for your own benefit or for anybody else that you're sharing the map with. You can also have quick links to .lan and anoint.is for the system in question, which can be very useful uh, if you happen to use this website to gather your information. Killboard. So over here is the killboard, which is very useful for uh, learning whether or not people have died in the system that you've been in recently. Now, in Signal Cartel, you are probably going to be running with Allison. At least I hope you're running with Allison. 
If you're not, please start running with Allison. Now, Allison, if you have the thing selected, will actually tell you if there have been deaths when you jump into a brand new system. But there are limitations on how far back she goes. Uh, the kill board here in Pathfinder will show you everything from the last 24 hours. So, right now, in this particular system, nobody's died in the last 24 hours, but if I go and click on this system, the kill board propagates with all of this wonderful, wonderful amount of death that has happened. So, if you come in here and you're like, oh, it's a C3, there might be a relic site here. You look at the kill board, oh, oh, explorers have died, oh, gas miners have died, this is not good. You might not want to run sites here. Not a good idea. And you can click on any of this to find out information uh, about them. You can find out who, who died and who killed, where they're from in the corporation, what they were flying by just looking at the kill mail. You can't find information on uh, what the killer was flying, but like that's not part of the, the kill mail and no one will be able to tell you that anyway. Next up, routes. Routes are very helpful if you want to figure out a way to get to a place. So like, for example, let us say for the sake of argument, that you've been in Signal Cartel for over a month, you join uh, our wonderful group of 911 operators, and you find yourself in the middle of a wormhole, and you need to get somewhere. You can use routes. The routes will tell you basically the quickest route to any system from the system you currently have selected. There are limitations in that you can only add uh, a maximum of six different systems for the routes to keep track of. I normally type in... Thera, Zuhin, and Jita. And then this thing will update and tell you how you can get there. So from this C2, assuming it was real, it is not, there is about five jumps to Jita by following this C5 highway into the, the Jita. Uh, and then to get to Thera and Zuhin, you would come out here through Alamonte and then follow the route that it has listed. So if you happen to be a 911 operator and you had to go wherever you wanted, you would just come into settings, add your target system, and it would very quickly tell you where you should be going. There are a lot of other ways to find routes in EVE Online. Allison has ways to show you routes, uh, but sometimes Allison will give you a route that hasn't been fully updated in, like hours and they may not work uh, but it only checks based on what wormholes you entered yes it, it only goes based on all of the information that you have here it does not grab any information from outside with exception to Thera it will grab Thera info which is right here and we'll get that momentarily get to that I do believe you can turn that off in the settings by the way yes Uh, next tab, structures. This one is probably not one you're ever going to use, but I'm going to tell you what it is anyway. Uh, you can input things from your D-scan, if you're in a wormhole, into the structures tab so that you can keep intel on what may or may not be in the system. Uh, so the problem with the structures tab is that it literally is an only what you put into it, and it takes a lot of time to update it, and most of the time, we won't care. Because if you're just going to be in the system, you're just tending a cache, maybe you're grabbing a relic site or a data site, and then you're on your way, you don't really need to pay attention to keep track of uh, the structures that happen to be in the system, but the option is there. The useful part of the structures tab is that if you happen to go to a non-wormhole connection that actually has a system in it, come on, or not a system, a station in it, it'll update and give you all the NPC stations if that is something that you need to know. So then below that is Thera. Now this is going to look a little bit different than uh, what you might see when you do it, but that's because Thera happens to be on the map here. Uh, if at any point in time you have a connection to Thera on your map, this thing will update and tell you which map that you have access to uh, and where it is. And other than that, it just drags all of the information from our very own evescout.com. You can use this, to th use this to find entrances and entrances to entrances and exits to Thera. I still prefer to use the actual website because it's just a lot easier for me to visualize it in my own brain. But it is a wonderful, wonderful option. 
All right, so that's uh, the main modules within Pathfinder. Beyond that, there are a couple of interesting things that it can show you. And mapping on Thera can get clustered. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me open this on uh, over here. So for the people that... Oh, you're not... You're, you're being really annoying. I want to open this over here. Yeah. So this is what Zap just linked. <laughs> Things can get really complicated really fast. But that's also Thera for you. Okay. Uh, other information that um, is easy access to is, well, there's statistics that we can ignore because that's mostly statistics uh, about Pathfinder and who uses it. Uh, wormhole data, however. If you've ever wondered, hey, there's this wormhole type. Where does it leap? How big is it? How much mass can go through it? And how long does it last? This whole thing will tell you it right here easy to cross reference same with statics if you're in a c1 and there's a c1 static it's an h121 little things like that kind of nice also wormhole effects if you find yourself like in a c4 pulsar this is what you can expect to happen you're gonna get plus 72 percent shield hp you're gonna get negative to your armor resistance so on and so forth nice cross-reference stuff this is all available elsewhere but it's nice that it's here and i appreciate it uh, you can also go into your account settings. The only reason I'm showing this is because this particular part of your account settings is very helpful. So if you want to either share or have a map shared to you within Pathfinder, you need to come to your account settings and you need to come to share and you need to turn this on. What does that do? Uh, Pathfinder shares maps by actually searching for other users that already exist. And if you turn this off, Anybody that tries to search for your character won't find him. And there are uh, some security reasons as to why that is. Because you can add anyone that has this turned on to any map that you own. Which can be kind of dangerous if you leave it enabled. So only enable it if you are being shared or about to share a map to someone. And then turn it off when you're done. Because otherwise, somebody else in this private Leon server of Pathfinder can create a map add you to it, and then it'll show up on your tab list. And if you just so happen to click on it because you're wondering, hey, what's this? Now your location is on this map. That might be used against you. So turn that off when you don't need it on, but be aware that it is here for when you need to share maps. Uh, the top bar also shows you what character you have logged in. You can also switch characters if you happen to have multiple characters that travel through wormholes. So I can switch to my main character, Yuki, if I so choose by hitting the switch character button, which I'm not going to do because she's uh, nicely tucked away in AD right now. Uh, it shows you how many people are on the map. If you happen to be sharing this map with a lot of people, anybody that is connected but is not on the map or just disconnected or not in game. Uh, general connection info of where you are, what you're flying, whether or not uh, you are online at all, or if there is a connection with Pathfinder. If your internet goes down, this is going to turn to off. You got a tracking button to let Pathfinder know whether or not you want it to follow you. And then some generalized map settings. I'm going to quickly go over this because I'm going to save you some hassle in telling you what never to turn on ever. Um, so there is grid snapping. What is grid snapping? Grid snapping allows this little grid to show up on your main map. This is very useful for organizational purposes. Use that. Do not use magnetizing. What does magnetizing do? Magnetizing makes it so that uh, none of the systems in the main map will ever overlap ever, which sounds great, except ever. So if I was to turn on magnetizing right now, and let's say I wanted to move Gelhan, if I drag it this way, oh no, it's moving all of my organizational stuff around, and now it's all a mess. It sucks. I don't like it. You can use it if you want to, but just be forewarned, that's what it does. Uh, signatures you can turn on, and in a normal sized map, this would actually make things better, not worse. Uh, I turned it on, and you see all of this red. You see all of this red because Pathfinder doesn't know what any of these are. It doesn't have any actual signatures um, in any of these systems to, to tell you what is connected to what. But if you do have it turned on, what you'll see is more like the information in and around this system here where it shows you that the uh, connection to ORDAT here is an A239, and the connection to the C2 is a D, uh, D382, and it would show that for the whole map, but since a lot of this doesn't have the information in it, it's blinking red letting you know that that's not there. 
So we're going to turn that off. Control Z will fix certain things. It'll fix if you uh, wrongly input things into the signature panel. You can also hit the undo button. Um, but if you move and organize anything here, Control Z won't help you, unfortunately. Good question, though. Uh, and the last setting over here is compact. That doesn't change a lot of things, but for example, if I come over here, uh, this is the system that I currently have Makoto sitting in, and compact changes it, changes it from showing her name, if it'll show her name. It should, it might not update, there it is. If you don't have compact selected, it'll actually list out every single person on the map that happens to be in the system, which is kind of useful at times. But if you hit compact, that'll go away. You gotta give it a second to update. And then it'll just turn into this little number one that you can hover over, and then it'll be like, yeah, hey, there's Makoto. She's in a ship that I haven't changed the name of because uh, I really should have done that. And she's in an Astero, though. Uh, beyond that, what is over here still? Settings. I skipped over settings. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, from experience using Pathfinder in larger systems, use Compact. You will thank me later. Yes, Zap. Use Compact if you're in a, a very large map. If you're in a smallish map, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, the setting panel allows you to change a couple of interesting settings as far as, like, whether or not you want the maps to uh, auto-update certain things that just make sense. It will delete outdated wormholes. It can delete... Uh, expired signatures. If you add a signature and it's been like 24 hours, it'll be like, oh no, this should be gone, and it'll get rid of it for you. Uh, if you give any system an alias, you can tell it whether or not to keep that for an extended period of time. You can track abyssal connections, as we showed earlier on the map. I don't know why you'd want to track an abyssal connection, because, like, that's only going to be there for like 20 minutes anyway, but, you know, it's nice that they offer it, I guess. Uh, you can also set a Pathfinder to work with Slack or Discord which we don't have set up in Signal Cartel at all, and probably for a good reason, but if you wanted to, you can. And this is what I was meaning earlier when I said, hey, you need to search people's names in order to share things. So, for example, in this private map right now, the only person with access is Makoto Illyrian. But if I wanted to search for someone, I could search for my main character, Yuki. And once it gives it a minute, it'll show you everybody that has that little switch turned on, which Yuki currently does. So I could click on Yuki, and I can add uh, a lot more people. The actual uh, limit to how many people you can share depends entirely on the server that you are using. The public server, unfortunately, only allows you to add 10 people to a public map. Um, but if you use any version of a private server, that number can change to infinite if the person running the server so chooses. And that is how that is set up. Also down here is the manual, which basically will tell you everything that I've been telling you so far and will continue to tell you throughout this class. But if you want to read and double check on it, everything you need to know in order to actually use Pathfinder, it is all here if you want to read through it at any point in time. General keyboard shortcuts. If you need to use it, they're there, and that is cool. And you can also delete the map, which I don't recommend doing. Uh, Zap also mentions there is also a limit to the number of systems on the map. On the public, the private map is limited to 50 systems. Yes, that is something I actually ran into while I was setting up because I tried to put more than 50 systems on this example map. But yes, on the public server, you can only track up to 50 systems at a time. And if you're doing this for yourself, you probably are not going to ever hit that limit. Uh, unless you're like Crinkle. Crinkle would probably hit more than 50 systems in a day. Okay, so at this point, do we have any questions? Because this is where I'm going to be diving into game, and we're going to be making a new map, and we're going to actually show you some real-life examples of how to use this. Any questions so far? Feel free to either talk and or type. I do not care. So let's say I open a map of whatever kind. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm, you know, you, you said you were going to show us how to create one, and I assume you can make a personal, personalized one. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to search for a specific wormhole on that map, or do I have to scroll and hope I see the, the correct signature in there? Like, I, I, I'm opening, I don't know, a Terra connection map like your star you're seeing there, right? That's, that's reasonably readable. But mm -hmm. let's say I want to I wanna search for J200727, which is C17 there on the left. Yes. And um, that's a mess of 50 systems. How do I... <laughs> Is there a way for me to filter and have only that highlighted? 
Uh, to my knowledge, no. You can have it automatically move to your location by clicking on this thing, and it'll automatically drag over to where you are. Um, but as far as actually trying to find a system on the map, I do not believe so. Private map. Because that, to me, comes to mind, you know, if, if, if I'm looking for a... Um, we don't really check tripwire for chains that much anymore, but let's say I want to... I enter straight into Tripwire and I actually go to the search bar and I put the wormhole I'm looking for. So, so ah, there we go, found it. Yeah, you can do that. You can also control F and it will search the map. All right, okay. All right, so That's yeah, the two options thing. is control F, which is probably the easier option. Um, otherwise, you can go into map and click on information and uh, this will show you all the systems on the map, which then you can organize by name or alias or whatever have you, and there's a couple of pages here, and if you click on any of these, the map will auto-update, and you can close it, and there it is. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Going back, there Allison wins. Is there a list of public instances? Uh, as in public instances of Pathfinder? Like people that have it actually um, uploaded and um, allow people to use it? To my knowledge, uh, nobody really privates their uh, Pathfinder servers. It's more of a, an OPSEC thing of you probably don't want to be using a Pathfinder uploaded to someone else's server who you don't trust. So if you don't trust Brave, don't use their Pathfinder. I don't think there's anything stopping you from doing it. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, if they set it up properly in the configuration settings, they can whitelist certain corps, characters, alliances, or they can go the other way and blacklist certain corpse characters or alliances. So while Brave, like, for instance, Pandemic Horde has a Pathfinder server, they have it specifically whitelisted to their alliance. Nobody else can make an account on their Pathfinder server. So then I guess in answer to your question, there is no list of it. Most people just use the public or they upload their own. But thank you, Zap. Does hosting locally for local use work? Yes, you can do that. You can actually set up a virtual server on your own PC and install Pathfinder to it. Um, there is a guide somewhere in order to do that. I remember attempting it at one point in time and failed horribly because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to, like, uh, MySQL databases and a whole bunch of other stuff server-side that I am woefully out of practice with. But that is entirely possible to do. You can... You can Give me a minute it. and I'll get you the Docker container um, that me and the Cryptid guys built. Makes yep. it a lot easier. So you can do that. Um, there was also... I remember seeing a thread on Reddit at some point in time. I can probably find it and link you afterwards. Of uh, where you could not host it locally if you had that being a problem. But you could get a, um, a somewhat free server from Amazon. And set it up that way. And there was a guide for that. Which is free, just a little bit more complicated. Uh, Bing. It looks like the biggest difference between this and Tripwire is that it is more user-friendly. pulls a lot of features into one package and better useful for doing presentations with Fleech and such. Is this pretty much accurate? I'd argue that uh, Tripwire is a lot more user-friendly as far as as soon as you know what you're doing, it's a lot... It's really simple. Uh, Pathfinder can get really complicated really quickly. Like, I'm probably making it look a lot simpler than it is, but I remember trying to learn how to use Pathfinder, and uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, which is why I'm here trying to do this. Making this course in class to show you guys how to use it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Who owns Pathfinder in terms of EVE alliances and political arena so that they can make use of the information? I... Ooh, I knew that at one point in time. Uh... There was somewhere on their main page they said who actually created Pathfinder. I can't remember it offhand. Is it in their uh, The page? creator is a player named Exodus4D. I don't remember what alliance he used to be a part of. But as for using um, info gained from ESI applications, it is expressly forbidden by the developer agreement. Correct. Uh, my main issue with public Pathfinder is lag. That is something that is a problem, especially during um, busy times, which is why I was really hopeful that the uh, public signal cartel version would be better. Uh, it is not, unfortunately. While there isn't so much lag as far as like um, connecting to it and using it, 
because something in it is not either set up properly or maintained properly, it crashes a whole lot. So there are pluses and minuses. Uh, I gaze. I have found data entry into Tripwire much faster than Pathfinder. However, Pathfinder is very good at shooting a lot of data, particularly for Wormhole Corpse. Yes, pretty much. That's the example that I would say in how I use Pathfinder versus Tripwire. If I'm just, if all I am doing is like I wake up and I'm going to undock and I'm going to go down a C5 highway looking for an SAR, I probably won't be using Pathfinder. I'll just use Tripwire. And because all I need to know is roughly speaking where I've been and where I'm going. And I'm just quickly diving through as many holes as possible. I'll use Tripwire for that. But um, for my daily use over at AD, well, at AD, we do not have an official Pathfinder map or, or anything like that. Um, I personally have my own little uh, private Pathfinder map for, for AD so I can keep track of things. Um, specifically so that I can use the, the roots tab <laughs> so that uh, if I end up getting a 911 ping or an SAR, I can dive out pretty quickly. Would it be worthwhile setting one up for the future when we start having issues with Tripwire as we've been having? Uh, we actually so, had a form thread open on that. Yeah, and, and we, the answer the engineering... is yes, but we can't use the public server is the problem because the public server limits private maps to 10 users, which is uh, less than what we have available in AD. Yeah, so like that is entirely possible. And um, for AD purposes, I think that Pathfinder would look or would work a lot better. It's just a matter of continually maintaining it. So, like, the map that I've been using is, uh, as um, some people that I've added to it might notice, it is very much unmaintained because uh, there are limits to what I can personally put in all by myself. I could sit here all day and constantly add everything from Shriftwire into Pathfinder from every every wormhole that is connected to AD and all of this all of the signatures and everything. That takes time and I'm lazy. So what I meant by maintaining is the fact that um, as it was mentioned uh, earlier, whoever ended up setting it up for Signal Cartel, I'm pretty sure just set it up for testing purposes. Um, so when there are problems like there currently are as far as all the database errors that I've been getting, uh, there's no one to talk to to fix it. They're just kind of there. Also, um, Pathfinder, as far as a piece of software, does update on a semi-regular basis. I think they, they there is patch notes. Uh, I think the last time it was updated was, here we go, patch notes, change log. It was updated a couple of months back, and um, if we were to use it and we'd want to use the most recent version of Pathfinder as we keep going, um, it doesn't auto-update itself. That is something that if you're on, well, the public version would auto-update itself because I'm assuming the owners would just update it. But for a private version, I very much doubt it auto-updates itself uh, because otherwise that could break things uh, with people's own private servers and whatever changes they may make. I would say Pathfinder is much better for groups than than Tripwire by far. Okay. Because if you if you have a, a group of people, um, Pathfinder works really well with a lot of data um, because there's a lot more that it can show, a lot more that it can share with everybody versus Tripwire or Siggy or what have you. Um, but when you are in a group, you can as long as everybody knows how to use it, everybody can help and add to that data, which makes it a lot more useful over time. That's an important comment you just made, though. As long as everybody knows how to use it. How user-friendly yes. this is. Yes. No, there is an icon over here uh, for layout settings, and you can turn on and off pretty, uh, much, perfect. Okay. pretty much everything, if you so choose. So, yeah, you can turn off everything. Unfortunately, you still, even though you've removed everything over here on the right, you still can't extend it into the third freaking... I hate this part about that. Oh, I see your problem there. <laughs> okay, I now I see I what you meant by it. that. Yeah, like I can I can make this 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 taller, but I can't make it wider. You can so sort of solve that if you like do what I sometimes normally do and just have it cover like one half of your monitor because most of my time when I'm playing, uh, Eve takes up three three fourths <laughs> of my screen space because I have it taking up a monitor and a half. But if you full screen it like this, yeah, there are limitations to what you can turn on and turn off. So you can you can Perfect. absolutely turn off everything that you're not using. Would you define the just the map to be like? Could you still use a fine? Like, could you still add signature on the just with the map itself, for example? Uh, it'll still take it. Um, so if you if you turn signatures off. Uh, or you turn this little thing off, as long as you select it on the, the correct system, if you hit Control-V, it still will add the signatures for Copy. you. Copy, okay, okay. 
uh, you just can't see or like make details for it. So like when you when you paste them from your probe scanner window, you won't be able to tell it what type of wormhole it is or where it leads or anything like that. It won't it won't let you do that without the signature window open. Okay, but there is a certain level of of editing you can still do just mm -hmm. with knowing the short. Yeah. yeah, and um, like within this window too, you can still delete systems and you can detach uh, connections and get rid of them uh, without touching the signature window at all. It looks stunning. Like the the entire interface really pleases my my. I don't know. It looks like a science fiction mo modern UI something. It really looks very nice. It's one of the reasons why I started using it more often, except in cases where obviously I, I have to use Tripwire. If you're running a Pathfinder server, can you edit permissions, make it so that only certain people can add or delete systems, etc.? Or does everyone that has access do does everything? Yes, that is one of the security interesting problems with Pathfinder. If you add someone to a map, they have full permissions to do anything. There is no there is no ownership within Pathfinder. If even I, in a public or even in a private server, there's just that just doesn't exist. Yeah, that just doesn't exist. Like I suppose if you owned the server and you had access to the databases, you could like go in that way and delete or add whatever you wanted if you um, knew how to do that. But as far as like within the software, if you add somebody to this private map. So, like, say, if I added you, Maxwell, to this map, you could instantly go into the settings and remove me from the map. That is something uh, the software allows you to do. Sure. Okay. So, okay. There, there is a certain level of OPSEC to that. So, if you have a private map, make sure you trust whoever you're sharing it with um, because they can remove you. The only thing that, like, you can't remove from is, so, like, if you end up using Corporation and Alliance maps... Obviously, you can't remove someone's access from that without, like, kicking them from corp. Because Pathfinder, as long as Pathfinder still registers you as within the corporation, you should always have access to the corporation and alliance maps, if there are any. So that's why I'm pretty sure um, some corporations and alliances use those exclusively. So that it, you can't delete those. And even if you do lose access to your private map, um, the the software does allow you to import and export maps. So if you happen to be like really really stringent about it, you could make constant backups so that if somebody you didn't trust kicks you for whatever reason, you could just really quickly re-import it, depending on how old your backup is. Not the greatest solution, but it's an option, and that's available. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to dive into game and uh, show you an example of, hey, let's make a new map. Um, first thing we're actually going to do is create it within Pathfinder, and then we're going to hop over to the game. So when you do that, there's a little add button there, and it brings you to this new maps setting. You can give it an icon, which can be whatever fancy thing you want. I'm going to go with... What do I want to go with? I'm going to go with Skull and Bones. Why not? You can choose a meaningful name, as it says. It's just a test map. Uh, you can set the scope of the map. So there are a couple of options here. If you set it for wormholes, when it comes to auto-tracking you going through systems, it'll only really auto-track you when you go from wormhole to wormhole or wormhole into normal space and back. It won't track you if you take a Stargate anywhere. That is uh, what the Stargate scope is for. Um, because you can use Pathfinder to keep track of uh, information within normal space, if you so choose. If you happen to be part of a corporation or an alliance that has uh, Solve Out Null, for example, you could set up a map that had all of your, your null sec systems that you can control, and you could use Pathfinder that way uh, for intel purposes, if you so want it. Uh, you can also send none and all as far as uh, how it wants to track you. So if you set it to none, it won't track you at all, regardless of if you have the, the settings switched to on, because that is not the scope of this map. And if you hit it to all, it'll track you through everything. You might not want to do that. Uh, and then for type of map, you can make your own private map, which is what we're going to do now, but you can also turn it into a corporation or an alliance map so that anybody within your corp and alliance automatically gets access to it. So that is what we're going to do. I'm pretty sure there's no other settings I'm going to want to hit. So then we just hit save, give it a moment. Oh, it says it added it, but it's not actually there. So let's hit refresh and pray. There we go, test map. So now we have this wonderful fresh canvas 
of which to work with. Now I'm going to turn on grid snapping because I love grid snapping. And hey, look at that. It automatically added where Makoto is currently sitting. As it'll do on any map that you, you open up, it'll auto add your current location if you happen to be in game and have the game on. So I am sitting in this C1. It has no information here. So we're going to move the signature panel over here and then we're going to dive into the game. Welcome to this C1. I'm going to close the Alliance tab because I don't need that open, nor do I need that open. And I have pre-scanned the entire system because I'm smart and this is not a scanning class. If you need a scanning class, we'll make one elsewhere. So what you would do after you've finished scanning everything, uh, you could decide right here up front if you want to filter certain things out and you don't even need to input them into Pathfinder. If for whatever reason you don't need to keep track of gas sites or what have you, or um, these wonderful relic sites that we can't use unless they have a tallow can. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to be taking everything. I'm going to hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then we're going to go over back to... Ah! Doesn't like me when I do that while also hitting my push to talk. We're going to go in here, making sure that the correct system is selected. There's only one, so it's not that hard, and hitting Control V. And then the signatures will auto-propagate with some information. So it'll already have, it'll already show you if there is any gas uh, or relic sites, and it'll input what those are, because that is information it drags from the probe window. What it won't tell you is information about the wormholes, which we will go into momentarily. Um, as I stated before, though, and I can actually show that, if for whatever reason I came in here and I only wanted the wormholes, I could just select those by themselves. Come back into Pathfinder, open up the signature reader, and paste them. So then, if I hit lazy delete, it would get rid of everything else, if we so wanted. Let's say yes for the sake of this example, because we don't really need those gas and relic sites for what we're doing right now. Instead, well, we're going to... Yep. That option is sexy. Right yeah. There. <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, you just got to be careful with it, which is why I like recommend using the signature reader if you're updating a hole. Because if, like, while you're scanning, if you're the type of person that's been like, oh, I just want to keep this very clean and I only want to show, like, what I'm scanning, you might accidentally ignore other results. And then you'll just copy-paste this and then tell it, oh, yeah, that's the only thing there. And it'll delete the other signatures on you because that's what you told it to do. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to go and drag some information. So we're going to go over to OUH802. I'm going to go 70k out. Because I don't need to be on the hole. Oh my god, you are coming up wobbly on. <laughs> you brave, brave soul. <laughs> All right, so then we land on Wormhole. Uh, the game already tells us that it's uh, a static connection, so that's really cool. But we're going to bring up this information so that we can uh, double check the mass and a bunch of other things. Now, I believe it'll lazy delete if you just copy and paste into the main window as well. Uh, no, it won't. It can. So to answer that question, the lazy delete will only happen if you have this turned on. Uh, if you have this lazy delete turned on and you control V, it'll automatically delete anything that you're not copying and pasting. But it's not turned on by default, or at least I don't believe it is turned on by default. So that is a toggle that you can do. Uh, but then we come over here, and what data can we gain from this wonderful thing? We can learn by uh, either looking at it, because... Uh, there is wonderful ways. There's a there's a uh, there's a page on the the wiki that goes through trying to identify a wormhole visually, and I highly recommend looking at that because it'll save you so much time once you learn how to do it. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're going to be going into the show info button, and we're going to see. Hey, this is a wormhole that goes to high security space. Uh, it does not have any mass problems with it at the moment because it is not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. So what do we do with that information? Well, we go into Pathfinder. We find this was the OUH wormhole. Hey, it knows that there's a static here, the high sec. So we're going to select that. It's going to update that for us. 
It's going really slow today. Um, and it currently leads to an unknown location because we don't know that information. At that point in time, uh, you could dive through it and uh, grab the other side in an auto tracky, which we will do momentarily. But we have another wormhole to go to. Before that, though, make sure you save your bookmark. And public service announcement. Always bookmark your wormhole on the wormhole. Do not bookmark from the probe window. I will never call you out on this, but I will in I will judge you until the end of time if I ever have to use your bookmark and it is not bookmarked on the whole. Because it makes my life annoying. But we're going to go to the other wormhole real quick. Booking marking from the overview. Yes, that is how you're supposed to do it. Because you, you have the overview here, you see your wormhole, you right click it, you hit save location, and this is your wormhole. And you will just bookmark it. This one's already been bookmarked because we're going to go into the information, and hey, this wormhole leads to the unique and mysterious Thera system. So this is an F353. Its mass is perfectly fine. But we're going to come over to here. And... You can scroll through all of these options if you want, or you can just start typing it. And know that it is a C12 to Thera. You can add any system you want to the map by right-clicking and hit Add System. And then it'll ask you to type in the ID. This is for, like, if you're not auto-tracking. If you're auto-tracking, it'll automatically put things in for you. But it doesn't always. And then you can set this to whatever you want. As far as color coding... And there's Thera, and then you just click on the name of Thera to drag your connection to there. And there you go. And then on this side, you would just go back to the signature side. You'd say, it leads to Thera. And there we go. Information down. You would also then go into the Thera side and uh, add the signature over here. Which technically I could totally do by looking at the Thera connection thing, but I'm lazy and we're not going to do that. Because instead, we're going to show you how the automapper works. So at this point in time, the reasons why you bookmark your hole on the hole is so I can go to my wonderful bookmark that I just made and hit warp to zero. Which you might not always want to do. But I know that I am pretty close. And there shouldn't be any bubbles. Because DSTN says there is no bubbles, so I will trust it. Uh, we're going to quickly double check to make sure my tracking is on. Yes, yes it is. Slightly dangerous, because I decloaked while checking that. But I like to live dangerously. And no kills. Hey. Thank you, Allison. We made it to... Wait, hold on. I need this system info. Oishami in Lone Trek. I am not lucky enough to have only one signature to input the correct data. Yeah, that's annoying. I said we're not going to be scanning, but you know, we're going to be scanning anyway. So what you can do is you can just go and launch your probes, cloak yourself, stop your ship, so you don't get too far away. And then just quickly probe scan your location, so that we can put the in proper information into Tripwire. Except Pathfinder is what I meant to say. It's not a scanning tutorial. Please ignore this portion of the class. And then, hey, there we go. What do we do next? We make a bookmark. I think it was a C1. I can't even remember. But you can always double check later. And edit your bookmarks accordingly. So, uh, on this side, it is OKS640. Now, if we go to Pathfinder... Hey, it auto-added where we are. But we're going to go back into the old C1 system and quickly update this from that side. And then we need to add the signature here. I remember it was OKS, OKS640. 
Now you can either copy and paste it or you can just manually do it. Uh, I do not remember what type of wormhole that was. That is a K162 on this side. Ah, that's something I should point out. So K162s, um, it does, Pathfinder does this annoying thing where it doesn't necessarily allow you to select the type within certain ranges. So here on K162, if you're going to Thera, if you're going to null sec, low sec, high sec, those are all fine. C6, that's fine too. The problem comes in is if you have a K162 that goes to a four or five or one, two or three, you can select that. And I guess they were trying to make it easy for people. But if you don't know where it is and you're not planning on diving through that particular wormhole, you kind of have to give information on where it goes. So I normally just pop it into the description and say that it's a C1 for anybody that needs it, if that's a thing. Or if you do go through the hole, you can just say, hey, it leads to this system that happens to be a C1. And all that information is nice and gravy. So if we go into here then, if we hit signatures, it doesn't update. Why are you not updating, my friend? I know you know what that is. The Thera side I'm not too worried about because I didn't input the signature on the Thera end, even though I really wish it would do that automatically because it's a Thera signature. Oh, come off it. Are you missing something? It did not accept my signature. Why you do this? Okay. Okay, and there we go. And now that should update. If it doesn't, oh well. Yeah, occasionally it seems to lag out. Downsides of using the public version, unfortunately. So we're going to turn that off. But generally speaking, that is how you would use it. And now that we are over here... Oh, I forgot to mention something. Um, if you happen to select uh, any normal space system, this thing also pops up down here. That'll show you uh, all the recent jumps, pod kills, and NPC kills within any particular system. Kind of useful. Hey, Yuki? Yeah. Sorry if I missed this. Can you turn off uh, auto mapping? Yes. Uh, you can turn off auto mapping. Uh, Sorry if you said this. I went over it, I think, briefly, but it's okay. Um, there is, like, further settings within your account that you can tell it to turn off auto mapping, but the easy way of doing that is just turning off that switch there. Oh, duh. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, we have a testing instance. Yes, we have a testing instance. It is not fully updated. So, generally speaking, that is what you do. And then you would just keep doing that through wormhole and wormhole and wormhole until you get something that looks a little bit more like the example we had before. So that is pretty much everything that I had planned to showcase. Of course, if anybody has any more uh, deeper questions, we can, of course, get into that. Is there any reason for us to be using Tripwire over this in our day-to-day -day activities, sending caches, you know, those kinds of things? Or can we go ahead and adapt over? Is that going to be a problem? No, you can do whatever you want. If you are a member okay. of Signal Cartel, you only need to use Tripwire if you are doing signatures in Thera, or currently if you are a member of AD. Because those are the official maps that we use um, for those uh, specific divisions within Signal Cartel. Beyond that, you can use whatever you want, as far as I'm aware. I'm sure or you that... don't have to use anything. Or you don't have to use anything. You can use pen and paper if you want. Yeah, not going to do that. Uh, Irate was asking, after wormholes collapse, does the map automatically update? Or is that just a manual update that goes in and that you'd have to go in and do? Uh, most of the time, you will have to manually update it. And that's mostly because uh, this is a thing with the tripwire as well. Pathfinder doesn't know when the wormhole was created. Uh, it knows how long a wormhole is supposed to last. But when you find it, it could, it could have been there for 5, 10 hours, less, more. Uh, and it doesn't... It won't automatically delete it um, when it could still potentially be there. Now, if you're sitting in a wormhole and you see the signature pop up and you scan it down like within the first minute or so that it's there, then its auto-delete feature will actually be a lot more useful in, in that case because it will actually remove it in that case if you have the setting turned on. But for most times, if you just happen to find connections, uh, Pathfinder will leave them up and you have to manually remove them because Pathfinder assumes that it's still there unless you tell it otherwise. All right. 
Uh, is there anything else uh, that any other questions that people have? Any other comments that you'd like to make? Well, then in that case, I'm going to thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, Zap says that uh, he's going to do a walkthrough of hosting your own Pathfinder server uh, immediately following this if you wanted to stick around. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to uh, end the stream and you are free to head off and do whatever you'd like.